Chez here for those of you who haven't met me before. For those of you who are back, you know I love to chat. Uh, and this video might end up a bit wordy, so I hope you're comfortable. You might want to uh, pause now and get yourself a cup of tea, because I got a lot to say. Um, yeah, I'm referring to my notes already. I'm slightly intimidated. I've put off doing this video for a while because it's such a broad topic. So you saw in the title, we're going to be talking about sight reading. So I've kind of gone off piste a little bit from saxophone specific, but obviously I'm a sax player. I'm actually a flautist, clarinetist, pianist as well. So uh, this uh, applies across the board. So hopefully this is useful for a lot of you and um, those of you who double, you can use this across your instruments. So, um, I mean, I've been thinking about this during this video for a while. It was prompted especially because I've had quite a few people um, criticise the transcriptions. I mean, they're just a bit of fun, everyone, just because you're like, oh, I'd love to be able to play that tune. And the quickest way to get it down is for me to go, here are the notes. Um, and if I was to write that, notate it, as in, in a manuscript, then uh, we'd end up with some copyright issues. Aside from the fact that it would take me ages. Um, and I love you, I love you, love you. Um, but yeah, these videos are quite time consuming as it is. So that that's a bit of a no from me. Um, I also prefer not to get sued where possible. So let's go back to reading music. Um, I think there are two main priorities in reading music. The rhythm, uh, which is, uh, just in case you're a beginner, sorry if this is patronising, uh, the rhythm is literally how long the notes are. But, 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 that's the rhythm. It's got no pitch, it's got no high or low. And then the second is the pitch. So whether it's high notes or low notes. Um, and then you've got lots of other aspects that make it a decent read of the music. You've got the dynamics, which are your louds or softs, your articulation. Um, Let's go back to how you remember those, actually. Uh, dynamics, if someone's a very dynamic character, they've kind of got lots of colours to them, and I think of um, dynamics, your loud and soft, as bringing colour to the music, bringing light and shade. Um, and the next one, articulation. If someone's a very articulate person, they pronounce everything, which apparently I don't. I'm told I speak far too fast for those of you who don't uh, speak English as your first language, so apologies for that. Uh, I'm just incredibly busy. I'm always on the go. I'm gigging at least five nights a week, so um, I just try and squeeze these videos in where I can, so I'll try and slow down. Um, but I'm not very articulate. <laughs> Articulation is um, how the notes are pronounced, so whether you stick after them and make them really short, da, 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 or whether you play them quite legato but with a tongue, ta 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 ta. Um, maybe in another video I'll go into a bit more depth on articulation because I feel quite strongly about it, uh, music geek that I am. Uh, last thing we haven't talked about uh, is the tempo, and that's the speed. So whether the speed changes at all throughout the piece, and um, it will it, that will be instructed on the music. And if you're a really decent sight reader, you'll catch that. I actually just got back from a speed awareness course. Oh yeah, boy racer that I am. Um, and uh, they were showing us various images and what you picked up from a flash of an image and then taken away again. And it's incredible what you miss. It's the same sort of thing with sight reading. It's like, how much can you get in whilst the music's still ticking along? Like how, how many of these aspects can you grab? But let's start with rhythm as a high priority. When, I, um, when I'm teaching and students have exams, this part of the ABRSM, which is the uh, ABRSM, Associated Board of the Royal Schools of Music. Is that right? Yeah. <laughs> My aunt was the chief examiner there, I should know that. Um, so, yes, anyway, name drop there. I'll break that 21 into eight for rhythm, six for the pitch, for the melody itself. Uh, what's next? Articulation, four, dynamics, two, and tempo, one. So for example, if it's meant to be quite a fast piece and you're going to take it really steady, I don't think that's a, I don't think that's a priority is to get the right rhythms. If you're going to play the piece slowly, you're not going to lose a huge amount of what the piece actually sounds like. It's just not going to be quite as animated as it was supposed to be. Um, same sort of thing, two marks for dynamics. If you don't have the louds and softs, it will just sound a little bit bland, but it will still sound like a piece of music. If you don't have the rhythm, it may sound like this instead of like, or whatever, let's say, ooh be doo I wanna be like you, ooh ooh. 
don't know why that came into my head. What a strange choice. Um, anyway, if you, <laughs> let's say you're going for King of the Swingers and you're sight reading that for the first time. Now let's say you get you obsess about the pitch. This, this is a real uh, common tendency. People obsess about getting the right pitch. They're looking, they're like, oh, is it a D or is it an E? Is it a D? It would sound something like, that's just awkward, isn't it? So the rhythm is the most important. Uh, if you bodge all those notes, it would still actually sound something like a tune, although maybe not quite like King of the Swingers. Okay, so we talked about our priorities. Now, doing multitasking and trying to read rhythm and pitch at the same time is really, really tough. It's really tough. And it doesn't really get easier until you're maybe grade eight standard and then finally you've got to the point where you can recognize every pitch that your instrument can afford and uh, you know most rhythms you've read before so you sort of recognize them because it's a graphic language it's almost like reading words if you ever um you know read a word and be like oh so that's what it looks like on paper and actually you've heard that word hippopotamus or whatever it is again a bit random chess uh, <laughs> You've, you've heard the word hippopotamus, you've never seen it written, you see it written, you're like, oh, that's what it looks like. And then you, you, but you just kind of recognize it, you've heard it, you recognize it. Um, and it's the same kind of thing in graphic form. And similarly about reading ahead with the music, uh, you might have read a sentence before and then kind of pronounced it wrong, like you predicted it was gonna be a question and actually it was a statement. So the sentence that you just read didn't make any sense. And you're like, oh wait, sorry. And it's because you predict what's going to happen a little bit. And that does actually happen musically. So let's take those two zones. Um, we've got rhythm and we've got melody or pitch um, and separate them so you can work on them individually. So first of all, rhythm's a bit more fun, I think. Um, let's go with rhythm. So. I've got a couple of things that will help you think more about the rhythm. Uh, first of all, some stuff to buy. <laughs> We're just like clicking on a button and feeling like it's gonna make everything better. We're like, I will buy that and it will make me better. But there, there are a couple of things out there that I would really recommend. One, I've mentioned in my beginner videos before, there's a, a whole series by this uh, lovely chap called Paul Harris, um, who I've chatted to a few times. He's actually a clarinetist. Um, but he does these series for, for sax and um, for flute as well. He's one of the top clarinet teachers in the country. He's just in, he's just incredible and just such a lovely chap. Uh, his books, I hope he doesn't ever watch this, his books are intensely dull. Uh, sorry, they're not going to be much fun, but they are going to teach you a lot. And um, he really, really focuses on rhythm, so I would recommend his books. They're called Improve Your Sight Reading, and uh, they're cheap, and uh, he does grade one to three, and then four to five, and then I think six to eight. Um, so they're in chunks as well. Uh, now, the other one I would recommend, there's an app uh, called Read Rhythm. I'll put all the links to these, obviously, in the description box. Um, this app is really good fun. I just, I love anything that's quite tactile and something where, because I love achieving, I'm very goal driven. Um, I love anything which has levels. So obviously this app is great for that because it's, it's a tapping app basically. It's not actually very user friendly. So I might possibly do a review on that. Watch this space. Um, if I do, I'll then put the link to it in the description box. Um, but yeah, uh, this really with them app, it's really, really great. Uh, not the easiest thing to use. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's basically just focusing on how long each of these beats are. I recommend a couple of books for pitch. So um, if you're a beginner, I would recommend there's one called Jazzy Duets. Um, anything, you basically want anything where you're forced to carry on reading. Uh, jazzy duets, they're just quite simple, they're repetitive. Sorry, it's by a chap called James Ray. Again, really, really nice guy. God, has he written a lot of music. Wow, he's like the Mozart of the sax world. Um, yeah, blooming nice chap. He's got a lot to say about teaching and I like him a lot. So I'm going to recommend his book, Jazzy Duets. There's Easy Jazzy Duets and there's Jazzy Duets. So those two are good for you guys, you beginners, and you can try it with your teacher. Uh, if you are trying to learn without a teacher, which is very difficult in the beginning stages, I would say for a start, but fair enough, good for you if you're very self-motivated. If you're trying to learn without a teacher, I would recommend you get one that comes along with a CD. Um, the only two that I use duet-wise 
are um, more advanced actually. So for you more advanced players, I would recommend mm -hmm. Fat Jazz Duets um, book. <laughs> And fat is with a PH, which I'm very fond of. I think that is cool. Um, <laughs> so I just recommend that one because the pieces are really good. And also it has it for alto and tenor. So let's say your teacher's a tenor player or whatever. Or you're a tenor player and teacher plays alto. You can, you've got both parts there. They, and it comes with a CD. So you could be trying at home. Um, this one is really, really great. It's just called Jazz Duet. Again, I'll put a link in the description box. But it's by these two chaps, Bruce... Oh, I don't, I don't know if I can pronounce this. Uh, Bruce Eskovitz and Ernie Watts. And um, when you click on the link, you'll see, you'll see why I'm laughing. They both look a little bit creepy. Like, I wouldn't want them to teach me. They both look a little bit creepy. Look like they've never quite been married, for example. Maybe never had a girlfriend. Uh, sorry, guys. I'm sure you're great. Great sass bears. Um, but the reason I particularly like this book is um, it will look at certain rhythms and break them down for you to look at individually and do some clapping exercises with before you uh, put them in context and put them in a piece. So that is actually a brilliant book. Um, I just pop back to what I said at the beginning about, oh, I joined lots of bands and suddenly got good at sight reading. Uh, it's because you're forced to. You have to sort of guess a lot of the time because that band ain't going to stop for you. If you're with 20 other people, they ain't going to stop for you. Uh, and the same sort of principle with these duets, it's a, a slightly sympathetic teacher perhaps going quite slowly but helping you push along and, and make that guess. Like reading words, you start off with reading with a finger and then you take your finger away and you do just kind of guess what's coming up in the sentence, whether right or wrong. Um, so moving on with that principle, the other series that I would hugely recommend is this series called Guest Spot. Um, you get them on Amazon, again link in the description box. Guest Spot, um, they basically put backing tracks to a bunch of tunes. So you could choose what works for you. There's one for ABBA, there's one for Adele, uh, there's one for just show tunes, there's one for classical tunes, there's one for jazz tunes. And just have a little look at the, um, whatever they call them, like title tracks, the tracks that are on it. Um, have a scooch through. And then when you're having a quick go at it, you want to start straight away with CD. Give it a shot. It Probably most of them are intermediate E. I tend to recommend this book to my players who are about grade three or four, so definitely been playing for a couple of years. Um, I'm sure they must do beginnery ones though. Amazon generally will say what sort of standard it thinks that that bit of music is. Uh, so yes, so you just want to get in there straight away, get the CD on and try your best to scooch around and play that tune. Now the idea behind this one is, hopefully you know the tune, so you're not actually reading the rhythm at all because you know what it sounds like. But unless you've got incredible understanding of scales and harmony and have done all my ear training exercises and can play it by pitch, uh, by ear rather, you need to be reading those pitches. So it eliminates the rhythm side of things. So hopefully combining your lovely Read Rhythms app along with something like your guest spot with these backing tracks and forcing yourself to read along, you're separating those two really tricky items. Um, I think I'm going to call it a day there and I'm going to do a follow-up video to this another day because I'm just sort of looking at the time and thinking, wow, I have talked at you, at you. I'm so sorry if that was dull. Um, but I have got more to say. <laughs> God, I've got more to say. I love sight reading. Such a music geek. Um, me, me, pick me. I'm like that kid in the front of the class that's just like overly keen. Um, I've got more to say on reading rhythm and reading pitch, but I think I'll save it for another occasion. So uh, keep your eye on this and I will follow it up with another one. But for now, well done for making it to the end. Peace and love. I think you're all great. And I'll see you in the next video. You might want to follow me on Twitter and Instagram meanwhile. And sorry I went quiet on you, by the way. I think I had a kind of about a week where I didn't really do anything. My boiler broke. How awful. It was awful. I had to have a cold, well, I had several cold showers. And it was just an awful, terrible experience. And it ruined my life for several days. Um, so sorry I went quiet on you. I'm back. See you next time. Bye.